Does Georgia's close win over Kentucky last night in Lexington mean trouble for the rest of college football? We'll discuss it right now, but make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan or just a college football sicko, period. We appreciate you for that. Also, make sure you're following me now on the social platforms at JD Pakel on Twitter and on Instagram. So here's the deal. 13-12 uh, was the final in Lexington. And there's a lot of folks today that saw that game that will not think about previous Georgia teams and previous Georgia teams' DNA traits. And they will be so quick to overreact, jump the gun, and say things like, hey, Georgia, they're fraudulent. They got exposed last night. That Kentucky team, the, the one that got boat raced by South Carolina at the crib last week, that's the, that's the Kentucky team that's taken Georgia to the wire? I'm just telling you now, for Georgia, and just for college football in general, I, I don't want to overreact on my side either, but I do think that this is sort of what good teams do. J.D., good teams play a, a Kentucky team that floundered the week before to a one-point game. Not quite as specific as that, but good teams in college football find a way when it's not their day. And if you, I mean, it, sort of generational, like 2019 LSU, uh, you have to find some ways to win ugly when, quite frankly, you just don't have it, all right? And, I mean, you got to give Kentucky a lot of credit here because if you could draw up the way a game would look for Kentucky to win, that was it. Gross game played in the teens for the most part. I mean, Kentucky didn't even make it to the teens, but like low scoring affair. Kentucky runs for a buck 70 on the ground. Are you kidding me? A buck 70? Georgia did not score a touchdown until the fourth quarter. Kentucky won time of possession. Kentucky had more first downs. Kentucky had a little Brock Vandergriff working in the run game too. Like this was the kind of game, if you're Kentucky, that quite frankly, you could have won, all right? But when it mattered, what do we see? We see Georgia making plays. We see Georgia in crunch time when it's time to deliver, stepping up to the plate. Hey, we, we, we need a stop here? Okay, defense, get a stop. Hey, we need a touchdown here in the fourth quarter? Offense, go on a drive, get, get a touchdown. And it was nowhere near perfect, okay? I mean, I, I don't think it's irresponsible now to see some things that Georgia did poorly and say if they don't play better against Alabama, they're going to lose. 100% true. All my all my uh, people in Tuscaloosa watching this this morning is saying, if they bring that Tuscaloosa, they'll get beat. You're absolutely right. However, who are you when it's not your day? I think that defines you. In college football, but also in life. Like, if you, you know, if you're if you're at your job and you're sick and you decide to mail it in, or you're feeling stressed, you got too much on your plate, and you're just you don't bring your best to the table. Like, okay, that reveals something about you. Georgia did not have their best. They didn't. And some of that you give to Kentucky. Some of that you look at Georgia and say, hey, you got you got to bring it every single week, especially the road opener in the SEC, which Kirby Smart had uh, mentioned is, is an issue now for Georgia, especially in the postgame. We got to figure it out. However, when you don't have it, that's who you are. And Georgia showed when they didn't have it, still found a way to get it done. And I tweeted this out last night, but I think it's absolutely true. Like, that was the absolute best case scenario for Georgia to win a game like that. And it was the worst case scenario for the rest of college football. Because this isn't all that unfamiliar, watching Kirby Smart Georgia teams. Speaking to like SEC road openers, sure, but also just like close games to start the year in the past. Like, played Kent State pretty close in 2022. Played a real close one at Missouri in 2022. What happened that year? Everyone's saying, oh my gosh, is Georgia, is Georgia that actually that good? What do you know about Georgia? Can they, can they actually go the distance? Won a title in 2022. In 2023, Auburn game. On the, I mean, took a, it was a one-score football game. Auburn, the same team that barely made a bowl game that season. Georgia, if they're healthy, I think they maybe win the SEC. Regardless, that game against Auburn was in no way, shape, or form like the Achilles heel for them or some sort of like, hey, wave the wave the red flag here. We're concerned about Georgia. No, Georgia actually was a lot better from that game going forward. Carson Beck said to us at SEC Media Days, that was the turning point for him as the guy at Georgia. And so the point I'm trying to make here is the fact that they were able to win that game in an ugly way. Kirby Smart, you could you could hear it in his voice post game like, 
He's like, okay, I got their attention now. If I didn't have their undivided attention, if we were getting complacent, they're not anymore because they got a bye week now before Alabama. Kirby Smart will treat this like a loss. I have to believe. And honestly, probably should. Georgia, in a lot of areas, played poorly enough to lose. They did. But again, the fact that they won, the fact that they looked at their own mortality in that sense and saw themselves be within a point to a team they have no business being within a point against, I think that wakes them up a little bit. And I said this multiple times throughout the offseason. Even if Georgia were to lose that game, I think Georgia and Kirby Smart have a specific kind of culture and competitive nature about themselves to where some teams lose a game and they question themselves and they kind of do the palms up and you start to see them from the inside out show some weakness and start to crumble. Like Georgia, whenever they lose a football game, whenever they have a football game like this where they play poorly enough to lose, Kirby Smart, he treats that like smelling salts for his football team. If you've never tried smelling salts, I would not encourage you to start after this video. But those of y'all that have, those of y'all that have seen an individual use smelling salts, you get a whiff of that. Wakes you up. You start, you start to start to feel alive. You start to have all your senses firing all cylinders. Why? Because you had something uncomfortable hit your nostrils. You had something uncomfortable as a football team if you're Georgia hit you in the mouth and you're saying, okay, if we don't figure this out now, we're going to lose a football game. We're going to lose in Tuscaloosa. Probably lose against Texas, too, if you play that poorly. So for Georgia, again, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. This is the Kirby Smart special just served up on a platter going into the bye week. It will not be a fun bye week in Athens, Georgia. I promise you that, especially after this game. You never apologize for a win. But again, having this ammunition for Kirby Smart, this is the best thing that could have happened for Georgia and the worst thing for college football because if you were going to get complacent in Georgia later in the year, Looks a lot less likely now after that game at Kentucky. So, whether you're a Georgia fan or you're just a college football sicko, let me know your take on what happened last night in Lexington, Kentucky. Make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate y'all and we love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.